Hello everybody and welcome back to another brainstorm. Today we're going to be talking about what is zero to the power of zero. Now this does look like a really complex mathematical concept but we're going to work through it slowly so let's get into it. Alright guys so the first thing that we're going to look at before we talk about zero to the power of zero is a couple of mathematical laws called index laws. Now all an index is is just a number to the power of something. Okay, so we're going to look at three index laws to start with, and the first one is x to the power of y. Now note here that x and y could be any two numbers, but all that means x to the power of y is x times x times x times x, etc. That could go on forever, but it's y amount of times. What do we mean by that? So let's just say that x is 2 and y is 5. 2 to the power of 5 would be 2 times 2 times 2, times 2, times 2. So you see that we've done that five times. Or we could do 6 to the power of 3. And that'd be 6 times 6 times 6. You'll see we've done that three times, okay? So that's our first index law. The second index law is x to the power of 1. So that is any number put to the power of 1 is just that number, okay? It's equal to x. So we could do 100 to the power of 1, That'd be 100, 10 to the power of 1, that'd be 10, because it's just that number one time, okay? And the last index law, probably the most tricky one to think about, is x to the power of 0. Now, we're not going to get into why that is in this video, but all we need to know is that x to the power of 0, or any number to the power of 0, is equal to 1. So, 1 to the power of 0 is 1, 100 to the power of 0 is 1, it doesn't matter what that number is, it's just always equal to 1. Alright guys, so one more index law that we've got to know is that 0 to the power of any number, so we'll call it y, is equal to 0. So that could be 0 to the power of 6, 0 to the power of 4. It doesn't really make a difference because it's just 0 times 0, and that's always going to be 0 no matter how many times we do it. Now you'll remember, like we just said, any number to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. Okay, so 6 to the power of 0 is 1, etc. Now, if we put both of these laws together, so 0 to the power of something, and something to the power of zero, we get this expression, zero to the power of zero, which is what we're discussing in this video. Now, according to this law here, we would say that the answer is zero, because it's zero to the power of something, so it has to be zero. But according to our law here, it tells us that it's one, because it's a number to the power of zero, so it has to be one. So what we're going to discuss now is, is the answer to this zero, or is it one? Okay, so what you'll notice is that now we've reached a bit of a dilemma, but the method that we're going to use to work out this sum is this mathematical concept of limits. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what limits are, but basically all they are is that we're going to have a sum that's getting closer and closer to zero. Then the answer to our sum is going to be getting closer and closer to a certain figure, which we don't know, and that'll be the answer to our zero sum that we're looking for, zero to the power of zero. So you'll notice for our table, the input is x to the power of x. That's basically any number to the power of itself. So 6 to the power of 6 or 8 to the power of 8. Okay, so we'll start off with 1 to the power of 1. That's super simple. It's just 1, okay? Because it's 1, 1 times. Then we'll go to 0 0.9 to the power of 0 0.9. And that gives us 0 0.910, okay? 0 0.8 to the power of 0 0.8 is 0 0.837. 0.7 to the power of 0.7 is 0 0.779, 0 0.5 to the 0 0.5, 0 0.707, and 0 0.4 to the 0.4 is 0 0.693. So hopefully you would have noticed a little trend in our answers so far. They're getting smaller and smaller, i.e. they're approaching the number zero. So if we just cut off our data here, this would tell us that the answer because our sum's getting closer to zero, the answer to our sum would be zero, okay? But we're going to carry on, because what you'll notice in this table is that our answers are getting closer and closer together. So for some reason, they're slowing down, okay? So the next one we're going to do is 0.3 to the power of 0.3. And that's 0.697. Now you'll notice something really strange has happened. Suddenly, our data has got from going smaller and smaller and smaller, approaching zero, and now it's starting to increase, okay? We've gone from 0.693 to 0.697. Okay, let's continue to see how this trend pans out. 
So 0.2 to the power of 0.2 is 0.725, so we've just increased again. 0.1 to the power of 0.1 is 0.794, okay? So what you'll see is that now, instead of approaching zero, we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the number that it looks like we're approaching is one, but we'll continue to be sure. Also note that now our numbers are getting really, really close to zero, okay? We've gone from 0.01 to the power of 0.01, and we're gonna go even smaller. So 0.01 to the power of 0.01 is 0.956. So we're definitely approaching the number one. Let's go really small. 0.0001 to the power of 0.0001. Now this is 99907. So we're getting very close to the number one. And finally, I'm not even gonna try to say this number. It's 0.000001. So we've got five zeros here. We're getting very, very close to the number one. And the answer to this is 99998. Okay, so we're getting super close to the number one, and our sum's getting closer and closer to the number zero. So because of this half of the data, we'd say that the answer is one. But is it? All right, so what we just saw in those tables was this here. Now what this says is that the limit of x approaching zero of the equation x to the power of x is what? This is just a really fancy way of saying, when we have x to the power of x, now x to the power of x is just any number to itself, and when this sum gets closer and closer to the number zero, what answer are we approaching? That previous table would have told us that the answer is one. And for that reason, generally speaking, we say that the answer of zero to the power of zero is one, okay? But technically speaking, we don't actually know the power of zero to the zero. Because theoretically, you'll notice that at the end of that table, we were reaching some ridiculous numbers of 0, 0.000 whatever to the power of 0, 0.000. But theoretically, we could have actually had these zeros going on forever and ever, and we still wouldn't have truly reached zero. And that's the reason why if you just type in zero to the zero in your calculator, It'll just give you the answer one. It's been programmed to churn out that answer because we as humans have decided it. But truly speaking, we don't actually know the answer of zero to the power of zero. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys soon.